Thanks, Christian. It's great to be on. So, as I said, this is an extraordinary moment, an unprecedented time in American politics, and the world is gripped by this saga. I mean, here it now takes aim squarely at President Trump as this whole Me Too movement, you know, gains momentum. Should he, should the White House be worried? Well, President Trump should resign. Uh, these allegations are credible. They are numerous. Uh, I've heard these women's testimony, and many of them are heartbreaking. And President Trump should resign his position. Uh, whether he will ever hold himself accountable is something, you know, you really can't hold your breath for. And so Congress should have hearings. They should do their investigation. They should have uh, appropriate investigations of his behavior and hold him accountable. So you are standing by your prominent uh, senator colleagues, uh, Senator Cory Booker and others, who have called today for the president to resign. I hear you very clearly agreeing with them. Do you think, though, that there should be, as these women have called for, a bipartisan investigation? Or are you calling for an immediate resignation? I think he should immediately resign. Uh, and if he doesn't, we should have the investigation. You know, I wonder whether you read anything different into some of the prominent women around the president. It was quite extraordinary over the weekend when uh, his own UN envoy, Nikki Haley, said, quote, that these women who accuse anyone should be heard and they should be dealt with. I know that he, the president, was elected, but women should always feel comfortable coming forward and we should all be willing to listen to them. Is Right. Is there a movement on his own side, do you think, now, amongst women? Well, I think the point she's making is that this is a very powerful moment in America's history. And not only should women be heard, but they should be believed, and they should be investigated. So when you have these allegations com coming forward, those allegations should be investigated, just like you would invest any other allegation of fraud or any other crime committed. Uh, why do we not believe women? Why do we not investigate their allegations? And so they should be believed and they should be investigated as a consequence. And so I think President Trump should be held accountable, and that's why uh, I think these women are coming forward because they want that accountability. They see CEOs being fired on the spot uh, for this kind of behavior and worse. And President Trump has committed assault, according to these women. And those are very credible allegations of misconduct and criminal activity. And he should be fully investigated and he should resign. So before I move on to Roy Moore, the uh, candidate, the Republican candidate for the Senate special election in Alabama, can I first ask you about, about what you sort of started in the Senate regarding your own Senator Al Franken and also in Congress with John Conyers, a longtime congressman? You know, you say they should resign. Why was it not okay for you to wait for the ethics investigation process to take its course. What made you, what was the tipping point for you and the other women? Well, you know, this was very heartbreaking for all of us. Um, we uh, worked well with, Pres with um, Senator Franken and it was hard for us personally. But when we heard about the eighth allegation, it was just, too much, and I felt enough was enough. These were credible allegations from multiple sources. And, you know, having a debate about what's the difference between sexual assault and sexual harassment and unwanted groping, if you're having that debate and trying to split hairs, you're really having the wrong conversation. None of this behavior is okay. And I wanted to finally speak my mind on that issue. And that's why I expressed myself as I did with my. Um, Abed and talked about how I see this issue. I, I don't think we should be having a conversation splitting hairs about different conduct. And to me, it was enough was enough, and I wanted to express myself, which is what which is what I did. Can I ask you, Senator? You have made it a cause, and you've been very prominent in trying to level the playing field for women across the board in their professional endeavors. Military, I said on campus, I, I've said, and now in Congress, in the Senate, has it ever happened to you? No, I have been blessed uh, that I've never had to uh, feel that sting of a harasser or a sexual assault and have to relive those moments publicly like so many brave women and men have. Um, but what we can't lose sight of, Christian, in this moment is there are so many women around America who can't tell their story. There are so many low-wage women, women who are on hourly wages, whether they're working in bars or restaurants, in service industries, on farms across America. and. Their bosses aren't famous like Harvey Weinstein. They can't 
uh, see accountability be held in the public eye uh, when these allegations come out. And they may never see justice, and they may never feel they're in a position to come forward. And, and that's why I'm grateful for all these women who are coming forward and asking for accountability and trying to hold President Trump accountable for his outrageous conduct. <laughs> I, I want to dig down a little bit, because obviously you Democrats have forced two of your own prominent members to resign before even the ethics investigation. And the exact opposite is being seen on the other side of the aisle. I just spoke about Roy Moore. President Trump has yeah. now got right behind him. I mean, is this a political matter in that they want the seat, they want it to pass their agenda, and they are just going to go for it? Well, I don't think this should be a political matter. It's about doing the right thing. And it's about holding uh, Congress accountable, uh, holding Congress to the highest standards, not the lowest standards. And I hope voters in Alabama reject Roy Moore uh, because of the allegations of pedophilia are horrendous. Uh, I think these allegations are credible. I hope that voters will vote for Doug Jones, somebody who is dedicate his life to public service and justice for all. And I hope they will reject him as someone who's not fit to serve in the U.S. Senate. I mean, it is mind-boggling. The world is really riveted. How could somebody with that many accusations, including allegations of going after minors, actually almost be about to be elected to the U.S. Senate? Now, a senior yeah, Republican... Sorry, a senior Republican, uh, the senator from, from Alabama, Richard senator Shelby, Shelby, has said, yeah, I couldn't vote for Roy Moore. The state of Alabama deserves better. But you've got a woman, a female senator, Senator Susan Collins, saying, you know, if the allegations are known prior to the election, we have a tough decision to make about whether it's our role as senators to overturn the will of the people. What's going to happen if he joins you in the U.S. Senate? Well, I hope that there will be an ethics investigation. I hope I'll actually have an opportunity to vote to not seat him. I hope they will make a recommendation to ex ex uh, expulsion, which is a, um, a role they can take. Um, but I think Senator Shelby's right um, when he says, I couldn't vote for this person, and this person shouldn't be in the U.S. Senate. Again, elected leaders should be held to the highest standards, not the lowest, and we should be fundamentally valuing women. And that's what this larger conversation is about. Do we value women? Do we make a space for them to come forward? The Me Too movement is a powerful movement, and we want to make sure it's a lasting movement and that it's not just this moment in time, but we reflect on how do we treat women? Do we value women in our communities? Uh, and then empower more women to be heard. And I also hope this continues to drive more women to run for office. We have seen overwhelming numbers of women running for office in the last election. And we need to change the player list, whether it's in Congress or whether it's in corporate America or whether it's in small businesses, so that we women can not only change this climate, but hold uh, the perpetrators of this uh, horrible behavior towards women accountable. Look, I need to ask you this because it's suddenly starting to bubble to the surface, including women. There was a big article in the American Interest uh, newspaper magazine basically saying, quote, that there, should, there could be a, ba a backlash. Mass hysteria has set in. It's become a classic moral panic, one that's ultimately as dangerous to women as to men. In other words, the idea that, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, a hand on a knee is is being held to the same standard as a rape or or a serious abuse. Are you worried about that? Uh, I'm not worried about that. I think we all know what kind of conduct is unacceptable. Uh, it is not acceptable to harass some of the people that w that work for you. It is not appropriate or acceptable to uh, attack a woman, to have unwanted groping, unwanted kissing, uh, throwing them up a sentence against a wall. You can just list the behavior. It just is not hard to understand. And I hope that this country is strong enough is thoughtful enough to have this conversation and take from it that we must value women and men who are also victims of sexual violence. We need to value one another. We need to care about one another. We need to treat each other with respect. We're not asking for something more than that. And so I hope that uh, people do not feel they need to retaliate against women or exclude women, uh, because that would show that we are not up to this moment. We should be big enough to handle this moment and create safe workplaces and places where men and women can thrive together. That's what makes our economy grow. That's what makes our country strong. We should be up to this moment. And so I would just urge everyone not to make an excuse uh, as some in, in some way to see this as a retaliation against women. We should, we should absolutely avoid it, and we should just stay strong. Women should be heard. They should keep coming forward. 
uh, and, and aspire to positions of power where they can change the players list and change the climate. Senator, can I ask you one last question about what Democrats stand for? You probably read the leading article in the Washington Post today, and it basically said, you know, in recent weeks, you've scored huge electoral wins in Virginia, cultivated public opposition to the Republican tax plan, purged two liberal senators, you know, all of that, but still can't agree on what the party stands for. What does the party stand for? And are you a potential candidate in 2020 for the presidential race? No, but what we stand for is we care about one another. We believe that if you work hard every day, your work should be rewarded. We believe every American should have a right to the American dream, that if you work hard every day, you can work your way into the middle class and provide for your kids, that I care about your kids as much as I care about my own. That is what we stand for. We have always stood for that. And so whether we're fighting to reward work in this country with national paid leave or equal pay or affordable daycare or universal pre-K, or whether we're valuing all of us by fighting for women's voices and making sure we are all valued in this country, that is what we stand for. We have always stood for that. And it, it is a moment in time where we have extraordinary candidates that are coming forward, and a lot of them are women, first-time candidates winning in at record numbers, uh, certainly in the last election in November, and even in this next election in 2018, we have more women candidates than we've ever had in the history of this country. You're so passionate. Why wouldn't you run? Well, I want to serve in the U.S. Senate, and I'm up for my own election in 2018, and I'd be blessed if my state voted for me again. <laughs> All right, Senator.